Cadillac Tracks. I'm back again. Today's quick tip will be quick tip number 83. Uh, today's quick tip, I'm going to go over some things that uh, we all need to be aware of. It's about CPU and latency and um, the buffer with Fruity Loops. As you know, um, as you make projects, you can get you can get interference and static and clicks and pops and you can get latency issues. You can get all these things as you dig deeper into Fruity Loops. And when you first start out and you're just using your little Fruity Loops ASIO driver, you can get away with some stuff for a while. But uh, eventually it'll all come crashing down and you'll get projects that just your computer can't handle. And uh, that's not good. But uh, these are just a few settings here that can improve the, your workflow. You probably already tried these to see if they help or not. But I just want to go over them for everybody that's, um, that's not even aware or taking time to acknowledge them. But it's just about these switches right here, the CPU switches. I, I keep these on. This is supposed to, as you can see right here, may increase CPU and performance. It may and it may not, you know. But um, I keep this on. It's for if you have a processor with more than one core. It can use more than one core to process, you know, information, data, music. Now, the same thing with this one, too, the multi-threaded mixer processing. Basically, you know, you have a computer, almost any computer nowadays has, you know, multiple cores. So basically, it can use more of your processor to run the program, which may increase performance, like it says up there. Um, another one that I use a lot, and a lot of people aren't don't really use, but uh, I use the Smart Disable feature a lot. And uh, I click it on right here. It's not just enough to click it on right here. You have to actually go to a plugin that you're going to use. Let me just go to one real quick, like Machine. Um, I used to always smart disable machine, but I got tired of taking it off, so um, I don't do it anymore. But if you click right here, if you click on a plugin at the very top left and you go down, you'll see where it says smart disable. And you can click that and um, just, just take a look at my computer, guys. When I hit smart disable, you can see that my CPU load dropped down to 5. And when I took it off, it dropped back up to you know, 14, 15. So you, you can see right there that it's already saving CPU. And just imagine if you do that um, smart disable for a lot of different plugins. You know, on my template, I'm opening my mixer up. You can see that I have lots of stuff up here, you know, on my mixer. It's a template. It's got everything ready to go. So a lot of these need to be smart disabled. And what that means is that it will stay off until you begin to use that device. However, with the machine... If I come in, I start pushing buttons, it won't do nothing until I actually unclick Smart Disable. And then also up here in the tools, you need to be aware that you can go to Macros and you can go to Switch Smart Disable for all plugins. So that's the Smart Disable feature. It can actually help you save a lot of CPU. And um, like it says right there, may increase CPU performance. This Align Tick Link, I don't actually use that often. Um, i never really seen a need to use it. Um, it says up there, it's for VST troubleshooting. If you have a VST that's giving you a lot of problems, the first thing you need to address is, is it a 32-bit plugin or a 64-bit plugin and stuff like that. All right, moving on. This right here, the triple buffer, just like it says, it processes the buffer ahead, kind of like when you're burning a CD, you put the buffer up. It, it gives it more um, loading time, if you will. And um, this is one I use a lot, actually. You know, When I start to see pops in my audio, the first thing I'll do is I'll switch the buffer on. Before I go here to this, you know, to, to change the samples or to bring that up or down, the first thing I'll do is I'll switch the mix, the triple. And sometimes I'll even do the mix in. This one, I haven't really noticed a big difference, but the triple bu triple buffer, definitely. You'll notice the difference. Um, if it's popping or it's just starting to pop, it's just starting to get too much, hit that triple buffer. And most of the time, that'll take care of the problem. It'll, it'll, it'll ride with it. So these three things are the smart disable, the triple buffer, and also these two multi-threaded generator processing and multi-threaded mixer processing. These ones I like to keep on. Um, they help to keep the computer running smoothly. They help so that I can have a low latency and I can also process a lot of audio without the glitches and stuff. So I can go down here to my 64 samples. And then I can run a big project and if it starts to pop or something I can actually hit the triple buffer and they'll usually catch it if not or when I get to the end of a beat it's usually time to bring the buffer up because I'm not using the keyboard anymore so I don't need latency response but I do need to mix the beat without any artifacts of popping so uh, this is just a quick tip right here this is Cadillac tracks um, that's about it I just want to go over the triple buffer and also the smart disable and these two right here 
keeping these selected like this can actually help to bring the CPU load down and help the audio to play without skips and everything. Cadillac Tracks 1.